Hi there, welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer all of your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, web comics, zines, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like these episodes, please don't forget to subscribe. So this episode, I'm going to be continuing to answer a question from Joanna Becker at Joanna Makes Art on Twitter. The question is, when outlining a story that has a lot of different things going on, how do you approach thumbnailing it into concise pages without making a 12 book series? I have a huge idea, but I'm getting stuck with how many pages plot points need to be without overloading the reader. So. The last episode I talked a little bit about script writing for comics, how to approach writing a script, um, and today we're going to take a step back to outlining. So I would recommend outlining your story and plot before diving into a script. This is going to be kind of a outlining 101 video and I hope that the different elements I'm going to be covering today will help Joanna and help all of you out there figure out how to create your story and it will make it easier to, to write your script for your comic. So I personally find outlining a really, really important step. I always do an outline before I start writing a script for a comic because the outline is basically a map to help me, guide me in writing my script. Um, so the, the outline is really where I hash out both the story and the plot and the theme of my comic or graphic novel. So a few basics about storytelling and writing your own story. Um, you want to think about your story as your overall narrative. Um, so just what happens beginning, middle, and end. And the plot are the various events that create the story. Um, so those two things, story and plot, are very similar and they're definitely two things, story and plot, that I try to hash out when I am making an outline. I try to plan out those two things so then it's easier when I start writing the script. So if you have an outline, you're not going to just be staring at a blank document or a blank piece of paper trying to figure out where to start because you already have a map ahead of time before even sitting down to write your script. So I have a few different ways, a few different techniques that I approach writing an outline, how I approach writing a story. Um, the first technique that I'm going to talk about is something that I learned in sixth grade English class and it's actually something that you use to write an essay, but you know, an essay for class, but writing an essay for class, whatever it is, if you're writing a history essay, or English essay, whatever it is, has its own story. So it's a very similar structure to writing a fictional or narrative story. Um, so this is the hamburger writing model. I wonder how many of you out there have done this in your schools, you know, when you were in elementary school or middle school. Um, so this is just a very simple model. Um, so it's basically the bun on top and the bun on the bottom and all the lettuce, tomato, burger, whatever is going into your hamburger. Um, so the top bun is basically the introduction. The bottom bun is the conclusion and the tomato, lettuce and whatnot are all of the supporting elements to, you know, support your argument in your essay, but it's the same thing for telling a story. Your introduction, that's the beginning of your story, the lettuce, tomato, etc. is the kind of meat of your story, the different things that happen to your character, and the conclusion is the ending of your story, because your all stories have a beginning, middle, and end. So this is a really easy way to just kind of start thinking about the story that you want to tell. And maybe you want to print out one of these hamburger sheets for yourself and write down some notes about your outline. Um, so this is just a really, really simple way to start looking at writing an outline to help you write a script for a comic book, graphic novel, whatever. So the second thing that I want to talk about as far as outlining goes is 
as I have mentioned in a previous video, Joseph Campbell, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. This has been kind of my storytelling Bible since I was introduced to it in high school. Um, I go back to it over and over again. This is a universal hero's quest, so Joseph Campbell compared stories, mythology, Shakespeare, all sorts of stories from around the world and broke them down into elements that they all share. Um, so that will help you to make your own story. So here is Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. This is kind of the basic elements of a hero's journey, so the basic elements of storytelling. Um, I don't really have enough time in this video to really delve into each separate element. If you want me to do an episode about Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, the Universal Hero's Quest, um, then please let me know. Um, what I wanted to show you with this was that there are three steps that kind of encompass the whole story, that beginning, middle, and end. So that's separation, initiation, and return. So you can see I wrote those in, but those are also part of the Hero's Quest, and I will explain these three steps to you further in a moment. So these are the three steps from Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces that I always return to because it's a really easy way to think about your story and your plot. So it's very similar to thinking of it as beginning, middle, and end. So your beginning is separation, your middle is initiation, and your end is return. And um, let me further explain those. So to further explain these three steps, let me read to you a quote from Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces. So these three steps are, a hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. So that's separation. Fabulous forces are there encountered and a decisive victory is won. So that's initiation and it's also trials. You know, your hero is going to go through all these different trials to make it to the end of their story. And then lastly, the hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to, to bestow boons on his fellow man. So that's the return. So that's just another way to look at beginning, middle, and end. Especially if you're doing like a superhero type comic this way of looking at it might really help you um, because this, you know, the mythical hero, the all the heroes from mythology kind of follow this. Um, so it's also a way to look at superheroes are very similar in some ways. Um, so, but I also use this for, I don't write superhero characters. Um, so this is something that I even apply to, you know, just an average every man type character or whoever my main character might be. So these three steps, separation, initiation, and return, fit really well into the hamburger model that I showed you earlier. Um, so I just, here's another copy of the hamburger model and you can see how the top bun is now separation, the lettuce tomato hamburger are the different trials your hero goes through and the conclusion the last bun at the bottom is the return so you can kind of overlap these two ideas of beginning middle end and the hamburger model and the hero with a thousand faces they all kind of are saying the same thing but in a different way so hopefully this will make you look at your story through various lenses and help inspire you to continue to write your story so we did the hamburger model we talked about hero with a thousand faces and now i want to talk about vicky king how to write a movie in 21 days I've talked about this book briefly in a previous episode. Um, again, some people might be like, why are we looking at this book? My comic book is not a screenplay. But screenplay writing movies have a lot of, in common with making a comic book. It's not every single detail from this is not going to necessarily apply to your comic, but I think you can pick and choose things that definitely apply. I mean, it's still storytelling, it's just with a different medium. Um, so I'm gonna go through the different steps that Vicki King has broken up 
screen plays into has broken up movies into these different steps so she takes a hundred pages as like the average length of a screenplay so we're gonna go through these 100 pages what should take place on each page as you go through your screenplay and I think this is a really easy model that you can adapt to your comic book even if your comic isn't a hundred pages you can easily figure out you know where these different events are going to take place within your comic it's just kind of easiest to think about it on out of 100 pages or in the a movie it would be out of a hundred minutes um, so yeah, we're going to delve into those steps. This is really an, an easy way, I think, to approach writing an outline, and I use this all the time. So I look forward to introducing these steps to you. So for talking about Vicky King's steps, I wanted to include an example so that I could say, oh, in this movie, this is what happens um, to better explain the steps to you. And I tried, you know, I brainstormed like what movie could I use that, you know, a lot of people have seen. Um, so I decided to use The Wizard of Oz. Um, I think most people have seen that movie and it's a really solid example of all of these steps. Um, so if you haven't seen Wizard of Oz ever, then I guess spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about these different steps and then the examples will be from the Wizard of Oz. So page one of a hundred is setting the mood, tone, and place. It's, a, it's the time to introduce your characters. Um, this is just to immediately hook your audience into the story that you're trying to tell um, so that the, that the audience isn't confused, um, that they know exactly what kind of story that they're going to be seeing. Obviously you still want to surprise your audience throughout the screenplay. You want the story to go places that your audience isn't expecting, um, but the first page is really just the introduction, it's the beginning of the story, um, and you want to immediately make it easy for your audience to suspend their disbelief and get on board with the story that you're trying to tell. So in The Wizard of Oz, this is really apparent from the very first minute of the movie. We see Dorothy running home with Toto and she's talking directly to Toto. So that really tells you a lot about her personality from the very first minute of the film is that, you know, she's this girl who's, you know, very loving and affectionate towards her dog. Um, and that's a really important plot point throughout the movie um, so and then of course you see her running through these barren middle of nowhere um, farmlands so you really immediately get okay this is where the story is going to take place um, and you see cows and chickens and things so immediately you're getting okay this is where it's taking place this is who the characters are um, so that's what's going to happen on page one of your comic too the next step is page three of 100. This is where we introduce the central question. So the central question is kind of introducing the theme to your audience. And in movies, this often takes place within the dialogue, something that the character said. Um, that can, of course, be similar in a comic book. Um, you can, of course, introduce the theme in a different way other than dialogue in a comic book. But by page three, the audience should be given a hint as to what the story is about, um, what themes the story is going to explore. Um, so this is actually really interesting going back to The Wizard of Oz. Um, you're immediately introduced to the theme, the central question, through Dorothy singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That song is the central question, which is kind of mind-boggling from a writing perspective that you know because we think of that song out of context from the story most of the time um, so yes that central question of that Dorothy wants to go on an adventure she wants to follow her heart she wants to get out of the boring farm life that she's used to um, and it's also really interesting because um, at the very end of the film Dorothy even goes as far as to answer directly answer 
the question, the sensual question. Um, so I wanted to read the dialogue from the end of the movie that directly answers the central question. Um, so as I said, somewhere over the rainbow is the central question that Dorothy wants to go on an adventure and that she wants to get out of her normal life. Um, so at the very end of the movie, the Tin Man, before Dorothy goes home, the Tin Man asks her, what have you learned, Dorothy? And Dorothy replies, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard, because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. So right there, she's telling you that pursuing her heart's desire, which is what Somewhere Over the Rainbow is talking about, is the central question of the movie, and that the answer to that question is that she shouldn't go further than her own backyard. So I find that so fascinating that they just really specifically answer the central question to this movie in the dialogue. Um, so it's not the easiest thing to figure out the theme necessarily of your story to begin with. Um, it might take, you might have to go on to further parts of your outline to really figure out what the theme is. It's kind of difficult to start with a theme and then make the story from there. Um, and I think that themes will just come out naturally, hopefully while you continue to develop your story and plot. So the next step is page 10 of 100. This is when we learn what the hero wants, um, what's preventing the hero from getting what they want, um, so this is kind of the main motivation of the character, why the character acts the way that they do, um, what's pushing the character forward, what's making the character act to push the plot forward. So this happens in Wizard of Oz when Miss Gulch takes Toto away because she wants Toto to be killed by the sheriff and then Toto runs back to Dorothy. He escapes from the basket on Miss Gulch's um, bicycle and so then Dorothy wants to save Toto. She doesn't want Toto to be taken away again and so she literally says we have to run away. Um, so that's you know, really specifically telling you what the hero wants is that at that point in time, that's exact. We know that Dorothy's main motivation is to run away, and we know that the reason for that is because of Miss Gulch. And Miss Gulch is, of course, the same character slash actress as the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, so then that kind of sets up the protagonist versus antagonist plot point. So on page 30 of 100, this is when an event happens that moves the hero into new territory. In the hero's quest, this is when separation happens. Um, so the, you know, you're putting the protagonist in a place or a situation that they've never had to deal with before. Um, so you're putting them into danger, perhaps. Um, you're putting them into an uncomfortable situation where they have to figure out what to do next. Um, so this happens in Wizard of Oz. It's when the Wicked Witch of the West first appears and she accuses Dorothy of killing her sister and of stealing the ruby red slippers. Um, so this is, you know, when Dorothy is like confronted by this antagonist and has to figure, and she's in a totally new world. This is right after they welcome her to the land of Oz and she has no idea what's going on so she really has to quickly figure out what she's doing there and you know how she's going to deal with the threat of the Wicked Witch. Page 45 is when a metaphor happens. It's the initial growth of the character. A small scene with symbolic overtones occurs and um, there's a clue to the resolution of the story. Um, so this is kind of where something might happen to your character that makes them, maybe they have a small setback and they have to reconsider what they're doing, um, or they've met other characters that change their outlook on the situation. Um, so in Wizard of Oz this happens, so the 
um, Wicked Witch appears again and kind of attacks Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow. And the Tin Man and the Scarecrow, after the witch disappears, they, they you know, say, Dorothy, we're not afraid of the witch and we're going to help you get to the Wizard of Oz. And so she's, she, so Dorothy's like, you're the best friends that I ever had. Let me read that quote. She says, yeah, you're the best friends anybody ever had. Um, so that is, you know, a really small scene. It's a kind of like a quiet scene after a lot of action happens. Um, so it's kind of a scene for introspection. The characters are kind of reevaluating the situation. Um, and of course, friendship is a huge um, part of the overall story of The Wizard of Oz. It's really about the relationship between Dorothy and her friends, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Lion. Um, so this is um, basically just when, you know, it's kind of like the, the calm before the storm. Um, so this is kind of setting it up for events to escalate even further. Page 60 is known as the point of no return. The hero commits further against all odds to his goal and the hero is in big trouble. It's a crisis point in the story. Um, so this is maybe the hero ends up going against something that makes them doubt themselves. They're scared or, you know, have to reevaluate the situation again. Um, so in Wizard of Oz, this is a really famous scene where Dorothy and her and company are in the Emerald City and they look up and in the sky the witch is writing with her broomstick flying through the sky with her broomstick and writing surrender Dorothy. Um, so that's like a really iconic scene. So Dorothy and company just become totally scared, panicked, and they know they have to keep going. They have to reach the wizard to because they know they're in danger from the witch. Um, so this is, you know, I don't know, this just seems like such an iconic scene that everyone knows. I mean, there's so many iconic scenes in Wizard of Oz, but this one, I don't know, it kind of sticks out in my mind. Um, so if you can do these, I mean, it's difficult to write a story that's so iconic, but if you can think of these different iconic scenes um, that help tell the story, um, that might be useful when you're writing your own script for your comic. So page 75, the hero is about to give up when something educates him, her, them. Um, so in The Wizard of Oz that happens when, so Dorothy and Toto are kidnapped by the Wicked Witch and the Wicked Witch tries to take the slippers, the ruby red slippers from Dorothy, but a magical force prevents her from taking them off Dorothy's feet. Um, so this is kind of like an aha moment where it's like, oh, the reality of things are not what we thought they were. Um, and it's like, okay, there's something going on with the witch, you know, the witch isn't telling the whole truth maybe, or um, there are other forces at work. Um, so this is kind of an interesting scene, the idea of that the hero needs to learn something, that the hero gets some kind of clue to help them continue on their quest. Um, so this is this is getting towards the end of your story, 75 out of 100, um, and it kind of helps propel the plot. All of these steps really help pro propel the plot towards the end. So each, each plot point, each part of this outline, each step should get you further and further along. You shouldn't have any scenes that are just there and don't push your plot forward because then your audience might get bored or it might seem like a superfluous scene that has nothing to do with the story. So every little thing should be pushing your protagonist to the end, to the climax, and to the resolution. So page 90 of 100 is the crisis point, the climax. This is, of course, a really important part of the story. Um, this is when your audience should be like dying to know how it's going to end, dying to know how the story, the conflict's going to be resolved. 
Um, and of course, there's the question of who's going to win or lose. Um, of course, there are plenty of stories where the protagonist unfortunately loses. There are plenty of plots where the protagonist wins. So in The Wizard of Oz, this of course happens when Dorothy throws, by accident, throws the water on the Wicked Witch. She set, the Wicked Witch sets fire to the Scarecrow and Dorothy wants to put the fire out. And in doing so, the witch gets doused in water and then of course she melts the whole I'm melting, what a world part. Um, so that's a really iconic climax too. Um, it's something that really sticks out in the audience's mind. I'm sure it was really shocking to, you know, when this, when The Wizard of Oz first came out, it was probably really a shocking scene to the audience watching. Um, so yeah, this is just like what everything else in your story has been leading up to this point. So the ends, you should have a resolution. Did the story answer the central question? Is the audience satisfied? Um, so of course we know for a fact that um, Wizard of Oz, Dorothy directly answers the central question towards the end before she goes home. And of course you have that iconic, there's no place like home, there's no place like home scene. And then of course the final dialogue in the entire movie is Dorothy telling Auntie M there is no place like home. Um, so that's a really iconic ending again, like there are all these really iconic scenes in The Wizard of Oz. Um, so I think that obviously your The Wizard of Oz is a little bit exaggerated. It's very fairy tale like It's very much a hero's quest, like a mythological quest. Um, so your own story might not be as exaggerated, yours might be much more subtle than that, which is totally fine. Um, you know, not every story is going to be, you know, throwing water on a witch and then she screams and dies. <laughs> so, um, but these are just kind of the simple steps to think about to help you craft your story, craft your plot. Um, I kind of write these out every time I start a new script, a new outline. I'll go page one, page three, and so on, and try to figure out what each plot point is. So it's just some easy steps to think about. Of course, you're welcome to break any of these rules, um, but it's also helpful to know the rules even if you are going to break them. Um, but you can just follow these steps and then if you're like, this part doesn't work for me, I don't need like a metaphor here, or like um, I need something other than a metaphor here, or I need something other than this there, um, then you're perfectly welcome to go against these rules. But um, I think that these this outline is a really great way to approach writing and crafting your story because otherwise you might have no idea where to get started. Um, so I use these all the time and they're really helpful to me so I hope they'll be helpful to you as well. So I really only skimmed the very top, the very uppermost layer of Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces and Vicky King's How to Write a Screenplay in 21 Days. Um, there's so much more to delve into. These are just kind of the basics of starting out, um, but I'd love to go into more detail about both of these things. Um, if you have specific questions about Campbell or King, then please let me know. Um, just write a comment below with your question, or you can always tweet me your question at G -E Gallus. that's G-E-G-A-L-L-A-S. I would be more than happy. I'm excited to answer your questions in future videos. And even if you have questions that don't have to do with outlining, I really want to answer them too. So please don't be afraid to send me your questions. So I hope that this episode has been helpful to Joanna and anyone else struggling to write their outline and or script for their comic book, graphic novel, whatever. Um, the next episode I'm going to film, we're going to be talking about turning our script into thumbnails, which are the map or guide to the finished comic book pages. Um, so I'm going to go through my various graphic novel projects, The Poet and the Flea, The Plague and Dr. Came, and Pawn My Soul, and show you specific examples. So I'll be showing you specific examples of taking 
a script and turning it into thumbnails and this will kind of be thumbnailing 101 like an introduction to thumbnails because there's so much to cover with thumbnails and panels and thinking about your, how you're going to format your comic book pages. Um, so I look forward to sharing that episode as well. If you want to support my channel, if you like the videos that I'm posting, please subscribe. It's an easy way to support this channel. It's free. It's one easy click away and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new episode, which will be every Tuesday and Thursday. That's all for now. See you next time.